Okay, just a short little uh, demonstration here. One of the things I wanted to show you was uh, why we do a wet background sometimes, and I do that on, in, in quite a few of my paintings, but why do we do that? And I have a beautiful painting uh, that we'll be painting uh, in this book, and um, it's the inspiration from Telemark, and it has the roses and everything with the scrolls. But these scrolls are done into a wet background, which uh, is quite quite a bit of fun and it allows you to add all of these interesting colors and movement of colors here and make each scroll a little bit different and the roses and everything different um, because of your painting into a wet background. I also did this one. This uh, particular painting here took me about 40 minutes to paint it because I'm painting it into a wet background. So it does, if you look at it, it does a lot of these scrolls and stuff happen really, really fast, uh, very casual. And the background itself assists you in some of the uh, the painting of it. So here I have a board and I put a little bit of wet background. You can see that on there. And I'll take a brush out here. This will just be a, a, a like a number six flat. You can use anything. This works. I just want to show you why or what it is that we, what we're doing with this. If I take like a green, for example, here, which is I start out with a little yellow and a little black. I'll model that together and let's get a green. Maybe uh, shift it just a touch to the blue side here. Because I like to do that sometimes. So we'll get a little brighter color here. So here's a, a good green. Now if you want it toned down, cooled down or toned down, you can add just a tiny bit of the red violet here. And you can see immediately that grays that right on down. Or the red, the naphtha red light will keep it a little bit warmer. But if I start a scroll here like this, so I just model this color in here. If I start a scroll, let's say I start from the flat and I'm going to come right around up here like this onto the chisel and I'm building this. You can see the darkest part of the scroll immediately gets uh, put on. As a matter of fact, I pick up a little bit of the, uh, uh, the background color with that as I'm painting that. Now I'm going to thin this out just a bit and we're just going to stroke over that again and get the color going a little bit farther across. Now as I build like this you can see the scroll gets lighter. See how the scroll gets lighter going up? This is what we call two-tone painting here. So the outside edge of the so the inside of the scroll is darker and the um, the outside edge up here is actually lighter and fading away and that's called two-tone painting and what's happened is the scroll the color that I'm picking up here is picking up and building and, and mixing with the background color. So I'll stroke it again one or two times here to get it a little darker, a little bit more modeled interest in it. Maybe I want this a little darker, a little more shadowy color, slightly different color. Change the tone slightly right in here and let's just drop in another little tone right in here like this. Okay, and let's just drop a slightly different tone here and you can see, see what happens is they tone and they mix together right away and that's what that background is doing that background softening it and giving you this this other feel or this other tone i'll shift the color maybe pick up a little red violet change the color so on sometimes i'll pick up uh, reds or reds and greens change the color around a bit you know add other colors add other scroll colors inside here like this uh, stroking and then not not cleaning my brush just coming like this i'll pick up other colors and you can add other colors or other scrolls this is what is this is the multi-color scrolls um then the toning that you get in the variation the beautiful variation that you get as you're as you're doing some of these colors and this is the one thing that is painting into a wet background does it automatically tones your colors let's get back to a darker green here for a second and we'll add a common little darker green right onto the inside of this one here. We'll add that right in onto this one right here and bring those together like that. And add just a little bit of the tip of that right in there like that. And so you can build some beautiful look to some scrolls here just like that. Very simple. And I didn't do any side loading or anything like that. What I'm doing is just stroking into the wet background and the background lightens it up. Um, and again, we build roses and stuff the same way. If I wanted to, uh, let's say I'm going to put a rose right here into this. What I'll do is I'll work this right into this wet background here. I'll start my rose shape. Let's say I'm going to have a rose, which is my round. And so this would be something like if you're going to do this into this Telemark design. I'll, I do this a lot. I just start this kind of rounding shape here like that. I will pick up a little bit of my darkness. Just put a little red in that too. A little red violet, a little red. 
and stroke this up and around like this and see how it lightens up as it's going up and around because my background is light and as I stroke the dark here and I move it up like this it automatically uh, lightens up, picks up. This is the beautiful part about a little primer. Now I'll start the bowl of the rose out like this. Let's start a little darker stroke out like that. If I want to have uh, a nice curved movement of petals here, I just go like this and push my petals out. I use my finger a lot in a painting like this. Let's come in just a bit closer. Use my finger a lot in a painting like this. Then I generally look to, so I got cool colors on there. I generally look to warm the colors, you know, into a painting here. So maybe I'll warm this part of the rose up a bit and just push it. But this is the wet background. Look at how that wet background just softens that immediately. Let's drop a little bit of that warmth right in here. That'll be pretty. And then I'll pick up my thick white, which I love to paint with the thick white. Model that with a little bit of this, this color here. Model it. See, it's not mixing up. It's modeling. Pick up that little edge that I can pick up that I love to pick up. And that draws the little light edge of the rose there. Pick up a little more white here. Maybe uh, pull down just a bit. Nice casual little little flowers and they paint when you paint like this they paint really fast and light and airy pretty fast light airy pull down a little bit if you want to incorporate it you can also lift your shadow up like that just light little flowers you can shadow around there or you can draw a few little lights into the center of this rose vary them around Sometimes I, uh, you know, like other strokes, I'll draw little light edges like this out onto the petals. Sometimes I just and just uh, do sim very simplistic little pulls in like that just to suggest some movement in. Sometimes I'll build them specific. Sometimes I pull out, sometimes I pull in. You'll see the difference here. But in all things, I paint pretty quickly. And here's a rose sitting inside of a nice casual scroll like that and I love to paint very very casual like that just to add little little bits and give the impressions of petals you don't need very much to say okay here's some petals I can just you know like everything build more and more white you just keep picking up more and more white and you build more and more which builds more contrast in it that's a personal choice how much you're going to do that's your choice how much you want to do. Maybe since I added that there, I'll pick up some more white here. Model that, stroke that just a little heavier there. Stroke down just a bit. And put a little heavier look to that rose right there. But you can always wipe the brush and you can always lift off. Remember I talked about lifting off too. So a very casual way to paint. I love this way. Anything you want to soft, make softer, just use your finger. Or like that but you paint it into a, ba a wet background like that is a lot of fun now if you're working you know of course if you're if you're learning this you can't do the whole plate at the same time so I always recommend that you take a little board like this and practice that um, if you are uh, doing a plate like here like the uh, the telemarks garden and uh, garden of scrolls or any of those that I, I do this wet background on you can draw your pattern on, put your pat, put your, put some of the, save some of your background, put on a little bit of an area that you're working with at a time. So do a little area of scrolls, a little areas of roses. You don't have to do the whole plate at the same time. Put on a light coat of the color over the area that you're working. Paint that area, but paint it into that wet background. Then take some more of that background and work it around. You can always come back, uh, you know, with anything, even with your background this here. You can even take, like I can come in here with just a big brush and work a little bit of colors around like this into the background. It's really pretty when you start moving some of your colors around and into your backgrounds and modeling it with your fingers and stuff like that. It gets really, really pretty. It's a great way to uh, to model and to paint and, you know, suggest shapes and suggest other little roses and shapes and stuff out here like this. and. And, it, you know, working into the, see how that, I work this into this background and I can go from the dark to light 
really easy. So I can set up a dark and immediately start to set this up to the light here. So maybe I'm going to make like a little rosebud right here, you know, shape like that. I can do it very, very easy uh, with the background when the background is wet because the background is assisting in shopping and softening out my color. So I can make like little rosebuds like this very quickly uh, and very efficiently, you know, in the painting. Add the dark and go right to the light there. Add a shadow side to your little rosebud there. You know, come in and pick up some green. Tap in some a calyx of some green. And, you know, pick up some of this green and start some little uh, leaves and stuff out there like that around it. You know, work around your around your painting. It's very fun to paint like this that fast. It'll take a little bit of practice to, uh, you know, to learn how to, uh, to use it and to paint into the wet background if you've never painted into a wet background like that before. But after a little bit of practice, you can do it quite, quite easy. But don't try to do the whole thing. Work little bits at a time and watch your color as you put it on and it softens out. Now, if it doesn't soften out, maybe you need a little bit of more background color. The whole te the secret to that whole technique is how much background color you put on that surface. You know, and every artist is going to be different depending upon how much pressure you're used to using your hand. You use in your hand. So one of the very the the largest uh, variations you get in the technique is how much color you put on that background. And that's going to take just some practice and try some different amounts, okay? Because everyone is different. I wish I can give you the exact formula to say, but everyone is different, okay? So give it a try. Have some fun with some of those flowers. Try some different amounts of background. And painting into the background is a lot of fun, okay? We'll see you over and do some of the, we'll do some of the other flowers in the technique. So I'll see you over there.